Welcome to part number 39 of Gran Turismo 5 V-Spec. This is the Moving Chicane, and today we're doing the Gran Turismo All-Stars Championship. So I'm going to get in my handy dandy Pescarolo Garage Judd GB5 race car, and we're going to go ahead and do this championship now. <laughs> yeah, all the AI drivers are grannies and grandpas because they drive slowly. Pretty much. Except some of my AI drivers are actually really good. It's just the fact that Monaco is... Ugh, dude, Monaco is just Monaco. So yeah, Gran Turismo All-Stars. This is the last championship for the Expert Series, and let's go ahead and get this started. Racing mediums? Ooh, okay. Change of plan. We gotta buy some medium compound tires. Have you done the B-Spec in GT5 yet? I know your GT5 uh, LP was like a long time ago, but I'm just curious. Okay, who's in the best mood right now? Vargas? Okay. We'll see what Vargas can do this. Kaz is not feeling good. Alonzo's not really feeling good either. <laughs> okay. So we got some LMP1 cars in the front. Got some LMP1, some like LMGTP, I think that's what they're called. I don't remember, like when like the mid 90s or whatever the category was called. We have a random GC500 car. We have a form. We have a what the hell? We have a um, D1 Grand Prix car in here. Hey, what's up, Tosh? Why do we have a D1 Grand Prix drift car in in this race? <laughs> and we have the Fister Storm. Yeah, the Fister Storm's in here too. Okay, so this is like the one championship where I'm going to have to do a lot of adjustments to the car. Because this is pretty much a spec race from the looks of it. I want to say 205? Yeah, 205 should be good. Alright, first round of the championship. Let's see what our boy Vargas can do. Eh, kind of a poor start, but he's got to get around the Corvette and the Z fast. Come on, get around them. There we go. Around the back markers, now we can, fi we can focus on the top five battle. Large field variety spec race. I mean, look, it is practically a spec race. Like, look, you have, in terms of the fight for the win, all these cars are on pretty much equal footing. The Minolta is like the only car in the back that really has to work his way to the front. Oh, by the way, Sky, all of my drivers in Beast Spec, they're all real life race car drivers, except, for, well, the only exception is Kaz, or like Kei Yamauchi, who's obviously Gran Turismo dad himself. Right behind the Bentley, come on. Get in there, yes! Nicely done, Vargas, come on. Good job. Oh yeah, dude, Sky's awesome. Go sub to him. And he does uh, GT Sport Open Lobbies weekly. And his are cool because he actually doesn't really use... Uh, necessarily, he doesn't really do the whole race car thing. Wow. Okay, really hopping over the chicane. Nicely done. <laughs> Thumbnail worthy right there. Um, he doesn't really do a whole lot of race car stuff. He does a lot of like the street car custom like tuning and stuff. So yeah, it's actually really cool. Although GT6, I wouldn't say I'm awesome, but I appreciate it. Come on now, dude. Show the Blitz Drift Car. <laughs> dude, it's the Fister Storm and the Drift Car are all by themselves. <laughs> oh, God. Golly. <laughs> I know, right? Dude, Vargas is flying in the Pescarolo. Thank you. 
How about now? Oh my god. Dude, the Blitz is still beating. <laughs> What's up, Manny? Um, no, Alonzo is not driving. Our boy Vargas is driving instead because he's the one who's feeling the best out of the entire lineup of drivers. That's interesting about your drivers. Oh, sorry, I read that comment kind of late, Sky. But anyways, um, yeah, so I actually spent like several hours looking for the names of the drivers. Like, so Kei Yamauchi is obviously the creator of Gran Turismo. F. Alonso, that's Fernando Alonso, the two-time Formula One world champion. R. Vargas, that's Ryan Vargas, who's sort of a buddy of mine who races NASCAR k and East. We have A. a Fernandez, who is an IndyCar driver from the early 2000s. A. Rossi is an IndyCar driver from now. And then K. Kobayashi is actually um, a former F1 driver and who races in the World Endurance Championship. So yeah, all six of my drivers are all real-life race car drivers. Even Cause too. He, he did the Nurburg 24 in real life. So yeah, he counts as a race car driver. Well, Vargas is really pulling out a gap right now. You gotta go. See ya, man. Awesome. <laughs> I know, my driver lineup is pretty cool. Dude, how is the Lister Storm still all the way back there? Oh, we have an XJ13. I didn't even notice. Is the Blitz still ahead? Yes. <laughs> it's still ahead. It's still beating the Fister Storm. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Can we get some Fs in chat for the the Fister Storm, please? Thanks, CK. At least one person paid respects. Two. There we go. We got two now. Skyline power. <laughs> oh, it is a skyline. How stupid am I? Like, I didn't even remember that this is actually a skyline. I just call it the Blitz. And it's still severely whooping the freaking Lister Storm's ass right now. Although the fight in the GT class is getting pretty good. Too bad there's no like multi-class racing in Gran Turismo games. That would be awesome. Like sport should have that. Cause this is basically the GT fight right here. And then this, this is just, I don't know what, I don't know what to consider this class. Oh yeah, prototype class, I mean, Vargas is just destroying everybody right now. I thought maybe the Audi R8 would be further ahead, but nope, I guess not. 
The Minolta's finally catching up to the rear of the field, maybe? While the pulsating Mercedes is just mm -mm, going nowhere. So yeah, this is going to be the only race I do for the stream tonight, guys. Unfortunately. I look at the time, I'm like, oh crap, I have to get going after this race is done. I just wanted to stream that one historic car cup race. Oh yeah, in the All Japan GT Championship. Like, dude, even Forza has multi-class racing. Even in the 360 games, they had multi-class stuff. All right, well, the Fister Storm has gone past. Finally a lap down. The Blitz is going to be facing the same consequence right now for being off the pace and slow. Yeah, Vargas just navigated his way around the measly. GG. All right, where the hell is the BMW? Okay, yeah, he's far behind. right now with Vargas. Dude, he is flying through the chicane. Holy crap. Looked like the car was really dancing through there. Like, that was awesome. Nice GT game should have everything. Yeah, I agree. Like, I just feel like after what we got in 5 and 6, not saying that 5 and 6 are bad games, but after, you know, yeah, I mean, I, I actually agree with you, Rishi. Like, after what we've gotten in GT5 and GT6, which is whether, like, the ugliness of, you know, like, the standard cars and blah, 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 or GT6 with its easy difficulty, and just not a really huge variety of events and endurance races being completely out of the picture. I feel like GT7 should just really be, like it, it needs to be radical, it needs to be radically different. Like, go back to GT4 with the variety of cars, difficulty, all of that stuff. Hey Apollo, what's up? Guess what, we finally won that historic car cup race and it took us only one, it only took me one attempt after starting this stream, believe it or not. And we got that one Alpha Julia Pebble Beach car that's in GT Sport now. Yeah. Tire temps? Yes. Weather? Absolutely. Like, my biggest problem with GT5 and 6 is that you have all these cars in the game, and yet you don't have enough events for them all. And then, towards the end of the game, you start winning these crappy prize cars that you really can't use again, you know? Like, for example, we won the Grand Valley 300, we win a Honda Dual Note, and if we did the GV300 in terms of the linear order that the game wants us to follow, what the hell can you use a Honda Dual Note in the end of the game for? Nothing. I guess they were kind of focusing on maybe, oh, you can use these cars for seasonal events, but we don't have seasonal events anymore. Not since 2014. Yeah, it is bare bones. And then, yeah, multi-class would be fun, but the online system is actually pretty good. Yeah, dude, the online is just fine. Except for, like, the whole driver rating, safety rating. That needs a massive improvement for sure, but... In terms of actually trying to enforce, like, competitiveness and somewhat decent racing, I think GT Sport 
definitely has a step up from like Forza 7 or Project Cars or, you know, games like those, you know, definitely, in terms of console. PC, obviously, you have Assetto, you have iRacing, you have R Factor 2, you have those kind of games, which obviously dethrone anything on console. Yeah, definitely, Apollo. They're never underheated, yeah. Vargas pretty much is just cruising at this point. Who's ahead of him? Oh, this battle. Alright, since Vargas has pretty much won the race, let's go ahead and see the GT battle now. And a set of course a GT Sport combination would be amazing, yeah. Yeah, that'd be pretty good. Okay, the Jaguar pretty much won the pretty much won the GT battle. But of course we win overall. So we pretty much have a six car fight for the championship. And then best of the rest. Go ahead and pick and choose your favorite driver and favorite car because I think from seventh to tenth, those cars are gonna be scrapping for those positions throughout this whole championship. We'll see. Alright, let me go ahead and save the replay. The Fister lost. Yep. Lost to a freaking D1 Grand Prix car, believe it or not. Okay, Grand Valley Speedway is the site for round number two. I'm gonna do this one... I'm gonna do this race... And hell, I might do the third race, who knows, but for sure I'm not streaming that long tonight. I'm going to increase the top speed and slightly decrease the downforce. Okay, there we go. Oh, Jesus Christ, we barely just started the race. Same thing as before. Yes. Immediately getting around the GT cars. Good. Mercedes and BMW scrapping for the lead right now. BMW in the lead. All right. I think the CLK is going to fall back. Who's driving? Vargas. Like, I'm not sure who's going to do the races yet, but for sure Vargas is going to be the guy who does the NASCAR championship because he's a K&N East driver. NASCAR K&N East, but, um, yeah. And then he's driving for Rev Racing, so he's got to drive a, He has to drive a Toyota because that's the manufacturer he drives for. Yeah, really what I hope for CK is, like I said, a really long... A really long career like simulation mode or GT mode or whatever you want to call it give us a lot of give us a lot of race events and the seasonals as well all right up to the podium now we have the CK to the dispose CLK I mean not UCK sorry <laughs> Just like that, he catches up to the BMW. Yay! 
Yeah, in GT Sport, the way they do it is fine, too. But it's just like... At the beginning, they didn't have much offline content. They only had driving school, circuit experience, and driving missions. GT League kind of gives it more content. But really, GT League is kind of uninspiring for me. It's just like... The AI is just ridiculously easy. Hey, let's hit five. What's up? True, Rishi. That is true. Yeah, I'm actually... Yeah, it's only for money grinding, pretty much. Especially that one premium sports lounge rage, rage, race. Where's NFS Underground 2? Not today. So I haven't played this game in two months on the on the channel. We gotta, I gotta finish GT 5's B spec mode. My friend. Uh, NFS Underground 2 will be later this week, but I really need to start playing this again because I, I kind of miss playing Gran Turismo. There we go. Vargas to the lead. No, definitely, dude. Polyphony has the resources to... Dude, they have the resources and the manpower, in my opinion, to do that. Like, they really can. I truly believe they can make a good AI, but I don't know why they don't. Dude, the right front looks like a smushed pancake. Vargas is kind of abusing the Pescarolo. Yeah, uh, I, I feel the same way, CK. Like, I appreciate it, but it's not enough to keep me playing it all the time. Um, you know what, Let's Hit 5? I do occasionally play non-racing games, although I did start two days ago. I actually did Mega Man X on the channel. I actually have the stream archive still out. But when I play non-racing games, it's not going to be in a Let's Play format. It'll just be like a casual kind of stream. What's up, Arthur? <laughs> it is AI would be the best. Hey, GTSV, what's up, man? And Arthur, we finally got through the freaking hell that was the historic car cup. Hey, welcome back, Lucinho. Tomahawk plus Lamont plus corner cuts equals fast money. Finally found a person who isn't playing Fortnite. <laughs> like, okay. You know, here's the thing about streaming Fortnite. For for me, it's just like, I don't know, man. Like, unless, unless it's a game that I really like. Unless it's something that I'm really invested to. Like, iRacing, for example. Like, or like GT Sport, you know, like FIA stuff, like in terms of not interacting with an audience and wanting to fo fully focus on the game, that's the kind of stuff I want to do. If I want to play other games that aren't racing related, I want to play stuff that I can interact with my audience, you know, and just kind of interact with the game a little bit more because, you know, I watch people play PUBG and I watch people play Fortnite and obviously they're invested into the game because they have to be, you know what I mean? They, they have to be playing those games because they any minute they can die. You know what I mean? And it's just like... I'd rather would just want to stream a game like Mega Man. A game that I already know. Have some fun with the audience. And I don't like Fortnite at all. You're slaving away on like GT's, uh, GTS video. <laughs> PC's being an ass. Damn. Yeah, I like PUBG way more as well. I like it a lot more than 
than Fortnite. But really, like, I'm not too crazy about the Battle Royale games, honestly. I mean, there's some people out there who stream Fortnite and they're entertaining to watch, like Sky Hurricane, for example, because he has people play with him, or Ambush King. But, I don't know, man. It's, it's just like, it's not my cup of tea, basically. Now, the one game I'd like to stream on the channel is Metal Gear Solid, but I'm waiting for Marvin the Gamer and Sky Hurricane to finish so I don't spoil it for them. No, no, no pressure, guys. <laughs> no pressure. You're total trash at Fortnite. Yeah, but you're entertaining. Battle Royale is a fat in your opinion? Yeah, I agree. Just like fighting games in the 90s and just like first person shooters in the 2000s. Minecraft Hunger Games is a classic. Fortnite is only for people that want to break something. <laughs> play one game of Fortnite and hop the F out of there. Fortnite would be more fun if you didn't have to build anything, just like sim racing in the 2010s. <laughs> oh boy. Here we go. League of Legends number one on Twitch, COD, Black Ops 4, Fortnite, PUBG is number 10. I'm not too crazy about League of Legends either. I have a friend who's really dedicated to League and I don't understand how to play it and I'm just like, dude, I don't even want to bother with it. It's too complicated for me. But yeah, anyways, about Fortnite, like, since when was sim racing a fad? <laughs> One thing about Fortnite's interesting is watching people break their keyboards live. <laughs> I actually never watched anyone break their keyboards. Unfortunately, Wings hasn't played Fortnite yet. At least I don't think so. But, um, yeah, the thing about Fortnite is just the building. If it wasn't for all the building walls or barriers or whatever the hell, then I think I'd play it a little bit more. But I'm really crap at building stuff. I don't know when to build and I don't know how I should build. So, therefore, I suck and therefore I don't play. If you're happy with doing Grand Theft Auto 3, maybe play some other games or render stuff in Melee GT. Nice. Why sim race when you can buy an actual car or join an actual team plebs? <laughs> well because buying an actual car and joining a team, too much goddamn money. I can't afford racing. What about Counter-Strike 1.6? I like Source. I like CS Source more, and then CS Go. But, uh, yeah, I don't I actually haven't played Counter-Strike in a long time. Just get more money. Oh, yeah, it's that easy, right? How about you just donate? <laughs> get money. Really, nobody plays CSGO anymore? Just do the pack standard heist IRL. Oh, hell no. <laughs> I'd probably crack under pressure doing a GTA 5 style heist. Source, yes. Yeah, dude, Source is. Dude, Source was my shit back then. Whoa, Vargas. We know you're winning, dude, but no need to push that hard.
Alright, so just maintain your pace. It is old. What, 2012 was when CS... Oh, well, CS Source, actually. I thought about CSGO. Oh, CSGO, that's what you said. CSGO. I read Apollo's comment and your comment, I combined them together because I'm dumb. Um, yeah. CSGO is old. 2012 is when it came out, I think. Dude, I remember buying it on PS3 thinking that they were going to do crossplay because they promoted all oh, this crossplay connectivity stuff and. Nope, they actually lied to all of us. They just kind of abandoned the idea. I think they were a little bit too ambitious at the time. I miss when the transmission whine wasn't loud as fuck in the cockpit view in these games, so I guess louder is more realistic. <laughs> you made your own game once? What, was it a Flash game? That's true, Rishi. You can do custom races. Do I like Forza Horizon 4? Um, it looks awesome. I haven't played it, so therefore I can't say. I like 3. I like 2. I like 1. I just haven't played 4 yet. Oh, can you? I didn't even know you could adjust the transmission whine. an Xbox but thanks guy <laughs> I just don't really bother with changing the any of the sounds to be honest I just kind of leave it the way it is because I know if I change it now I'm gonna get confused and I'm just gonna get frustrated I'm already used to the loud tires and the loud transmission whine and everything. Oh look! The Lister Storm is still losing horribly to the Blitz. Oh look, it's the Corvette who's leading in GT category now. It's still loud. Ah. Why don't you just turn down your TV then? Fister is a boat. <laughs> too bad they couldn't, or too sad they couldn't make the Lister Storm not handle like a boat. Yeah, isn't the Lister Storm like a highly successful race car, anyways? Don't quote me on that, but isn't it actually successful in real life? And then in, in the GT games, it's just a pile of garbage. Was the car being drawn in front of the bridge pillars? Huh? I have no idea what you're talking about, my friend. Everything looked fine on OBS. Oh yeah, they had the road version in GT2. I forgot about that. You think you used it for the Grand Valley Endurance Race in GT2? Ooh. The Storm is a meme car in the GT world, pretty much. Ooh, the Norschleife. Two laps around here. Okay. Maybe I got shit eyes. Um, let's see here. Transmission. I think dropping it back down to about 199 should be good. And then, because we're at the Nürburgring... Back to max downforce. 
Yeah, what's the deal with the July Vertigo? It's always like, it's always in the cars, it's always in the races with prototypes, and it's always dead last, but it has like 800 horsepower. But it doesn't even have like the aerodynamics of a freaking LMB car. I don't know, it's kind of like out of place. Like it wants to fit in, so it hangs out with the popular crowd and it gets rejected by finishing last. Okay, this start's gonna be tough for Vargas. He's really gonna have to get aggressive. Who knows, I might use the Vertigo for the Nurburg 24, maybe. Hey, Barney. The school of the wheelie car. <laughs> oh yeah, the wheelie, along with the GT1. Yeah, you know what? I'm, I might use the Gillette Vertigo for the Nurburg 24 in uh, B-Spec, just for the memes. It's fast, the gearbox is way too short. Seattle Out of Bounds GT3 with a wheelie car. Oh yeah! And then there was that one video where this dude went like, he traveled like 20 million miles when he went into a certain part of the Out of Bound area. You're a McDonald's? Bring me something. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Honestly, McDonald's, I only like McDonald's for breakfast. Like, breakfast items are good. Apart from that, not really. <laughs> I'm thinking for A-Spec for the number 24. I might use that Mercedes CLK, because I know where you can get that. I remember where you can get that CLK in A-Spec. And it's spoiler alert in three, two, one. I remember that you can get it from the AMG Driving Academy in the special events. I think in the extreme, the one in the rain with the SLS, I think. But for sure you can get it for golding one of those AMG Driving Academy events. So that's what we're going to use for 24 hours of Nurburgring A spec. You think the speed probably overflows? You can use cheat codes to make the car wheelie and break out of bounds, test course and break the speedo. I think in the last three years, I went to McDonald's two times. Yeah, I mean, like, when it comes to burgers, dude, like, I, I like to go to more, like, mom and pop kind of places, like, smaller restaurants, because it's, like, fast food places, except for, like, In-N-Out over here in California. Like, fast, like, chain places really suck. Burger, oh, dude, Burger King, Burger King is... Fucking awful. Do I have any tips on leveling up drivers? Mm. Um, Wendy's? I don't like Wendy's. Okay, in Five Guys is alright. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me answer a poll's question, because I'm getting like something just came to my mind right now. Um Really? It's just be patient. That's really all you can do. It's just be patient with the drivers when you first start them off. Understand that they're gonna make mistakes and and just be patient. That's really about it. That's all I really can tell you. If you look on GT Planet or Game Facts or somewhere, you could probably find this long um, B spec guide. Rishi actually sent me one. BK used to be good. Dude, BK was never good. Yes, Five Guys is all right. Five Guys is all right, dude. I'm more of an. I'm asking for a fight. Well, bring it. Come on, bruh. Bring it. In and out is better than Five Guys. Changed my mind. Sorry, I'm biased because I'm a West Coast boy, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, the only. Like, honestly, I think I can easily say the shittiest franchise is Steak and Shake. Because Steak and Shake is, in my opinion, it's way too much money for subpar food. And the only reason why it's so expensive is because it has like a 1950s diner style. Like McDonald's is lackluster. Burger King is gross. You have an endless supply of peanuts. 
<laughs> but I'm allergic to peanuts. Oh, I'm kidding. Um, let's see here. McDonald's is subpar. Burger King is gross. Jack in the Box, I feel like, is just mediocre. Carl's Jr., I feel like, is the best of of like the main franchises, but that's not really saying a lot. I think Five Guys is okay. Like, I think it's all right. I don't think it's amazing, but it's pretty good. In and Out, I I like, but I'm not too crazy over In and Out. See, the thing is, is that like there's so many different places in Los Angeles that have so many good bur there's so many good small burger joints that once you have them, it really ruins your whole perspective on fast food places. Honestly. So, like for example, Marvin the Gamer and I like to go to this one place called Grilla Mall. It's a place in Alhambra, California. And it's basically a heavy metal themed burger place. And it's a gourmet it's a gourmet burger restaurant. It's it's the best. Do I like McDonald's or Burger King more? Um I'm gonna have to go with McDonald's because even though I don't really like McDonald's or Burger King. McDonald's has the better breakfast, so McDonald's gets my vote. Is in and out the West Coast chain? Yes, it is. You don't like it a lot? Alright, bro. You've been banned. Rishi, you've been banned from the channel. Goodbye. Never come back. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> That's harsh. That's super harsh for saying I don't like I don't like In and Out. <laughs> also, he threatened to throw peanuts at me, so nope. You're gone. Be gone. <laughs> I know I'm cruel. Erect. <laughs> I mean, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. Wrong. Honestly, if I had to say what my favorite fast food franchise is, it's easily Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A is easily my favorite uh, fast food place. <laughs> you guys don't like in and out get out. Well, yes, and I like chicken. I like chicken sandwiches, therefore I like Chick-fil-A. <laughs> get in and out of here. <laughs> Five losers. <laughs> God damn it. That's so childish. <laughs> it's, I'm laughing more than I actually should be at that stupid joke. Five guys more like five losers. Hey, what's up, Zero Beat? Shit. <laughs> Shit in <and> out. <laughs> Who knew this chat could be so destructive when he's talking about fast food? And you're battling over fast food, which fast food is superior. But can we all at least, can we at least agree that, <laughs> that Burger King is the worst out of all of them? Okay, how about this? Okay, how about this, guys? How about pizza? I like Five Guys too, don't get me wrong. I like it, I think it's okay. Like, I'm not crazy over it. I like in and out more than Five Guys, but I still like Five Guys, in all seriousness. In terms of pizza, like pizza franchises, I think Pizza Hut, it, whoa, 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 whoa. Easy, easy now. I think Pizza Hut is easily the worst one out of all the, well, actually it's between Pizza Hut and Little Caesars, but you really can't count Little Caesars because it's $5 pizza. 
So what is there? There's Pizza Hut, there's Little Caesars, there's Domino's, there's Papa John's. There's La Pizza Loca, if you're from LA. La Pizza Loca is pretty much the Taco Bell equivalent of the pizza places. Yeah, Dom I, I'm a Domino's guy too. I think it was Thomas, or TRG, Thomas Race Garage, who was part of uh, TRS. I think he actually broke one of his teeth because he was, like, apparently you guys in the UK, they have nachos. Like, Pizza Hut serves nachos in the UK, I guess, and one of the nachos broke his tooth in half. And I'm sorry if Thomas is watching this, but dude, I was laughing so hard, because not because he broke his tooth, but I was like, why would they serve nachos at Pizza Hut? And I realized, ah, it's the UK, they do things differently over there. We only have Pizza Hut where I live and no delivery, oof. I worked at Pizza Hut for eight and a half years, so I'm biased. Damn. The only reason Pizza Hut's about Papa John's is because of the stuffed crust. <laughs> Oof. Ouch, my nachos. Stuffed crust is excellent. I don't know. I, I don't like Pizza Hut, dude. Then again, dude, I don't even like Papa John's either. I, I don't know, I just think Domino's is the best one out of all of them. I like stuff crust is all I can say about Pizza Hut. And I feel like Papa John's is too ex it's not too expensive. It's not super crazy expensive, but I feel like it's a little bit too much for fast food quality pizza. Alright guys, how about this? Del Taco or Taco Bell? And I think that's pretty easy. It's Taco Bell. Gotta have that stuffed crust. We don't cut corners while making our shitty pizza. I only had Papa John's when I went to an airport. I don't remember which one. Ooh. Oh yeah, because all they have is Taco Bell, duh. Yeah, this is kind of an easy one. Meanwhile, Domino's hitting that racing line. I honestly never had Del Taco. I mean, Del Taco is like... I don't know, man. It's... If you think Taco Bell is mediocre, then... Del Taco is worse. Because at least, like... At least at Taco Bell, they definitely have, like... Yeah, I don't like fast food tacos either. Because when you grow up on eating, like, street tacos like I have... Then, you know, like, just... Fast food tacos just don't compare at all. Obviously, but um, yeah, like where Taco Bell kind of goes outside of the box. I know, like the commercial says, ha ha ha, but like they kind of go crazy with like the taco recipes and stuff because they have like Doritos or or like Fritos inside the burritos and stuff. Del Taco doesn't really do anything like that, so yeah. Favorite GT car, the Dodge Viper, the, the GTSR Team Oreca. All I know is they got fresh avocado. Sure. Oh, if you're talking about Gran Turismo car, um, I think I mean like GT as in like GT category, but that counts too. The Viper is one of them for sure. That's a really hard question, Luisinho, because there's too many cars and I'm very indecisive. Yeah, the Dorito tacos are good, especially the fiery ones. Like, the only thing Taco Bell's good for is literally the Doritos Tacos, the $5 boxes, and then Baja Blast Mountain Dew. That's it. Old Vipers over Modern Vipers. Nice. Doritos Locos Tacos. Alright, round number four. Cape Ring, my least favorite track in the whole game. I just realized I never adjusted the car, but I think we'll be okay. Well, Vargas just squeezes right into fifth place in between the two GT category cars, and that was really easy. K 
Capering is your favorite pre GT Sport custom track. Yeet. PlayStation Delivery. Oh, the RA LMS. I think he means livery. Maybe he's autocorrect or something. Fix that. I don't know. You got a racing game meanwhile we're talking about Taco Bell. Well, see, that's why I like to do my Let's Plays live, because I like the audience interaction. I like how we talk about dumb stuff all the time. Because, you know, forget talking about racing. So, did anybody watch the Fuji 6 Hours? No? Did anybody watch Formula Drift? Irwindale? No? Did anybody watch the Petit Le Mans? No? All right, Taco Bell conversation it is. <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, I mean, I don't know. St. Croix over Cape Ring. Yeah, see, look, Cape Ring, I feel like Cape Ring, the southern section is really fun, but I feel like the northern section, especially that, that whole circle, it's so stupid. I just feel like the northern section just doesn't have a good flow. Oh, so the southern part of Cape Ring and then the, in, the inner part of Cape Ring are fun. The northern part is garbage, and then the entire outer section, it's... it's decent. You always like capering, but not in reverse. Yeah, Majota is definitely my favorite track in GT Sport for originals as well. Oh yeah, dude. That's why I didn't really watch Fuji. Like, I was watching Fuji on the side, and I wanted to stream last night because I was just like, you know what? Like, I don't really care too much because it's like, who's going to win in LMP1? It's going to be Toyota. And maybe the GT fight was okay, but Petit Le Mans was just... Dude, it was edge of the seat kind of stuff at the end, especially when the number 5 Cadillac ran out of fuel. And the number 10 was just there to capitalize. And plus, Road Atlanta is just a really cool track. If the old version of Lasarth would be on GT Sport, it'd be good for me. Yeah, that would be cool. I just feel like they wouldn't have any old tracks because of the focus of the game being more online oriented. If the old, oh wait, I like more tracks with jumps. The jump is the best part though. Yeah, okay, I'll admit the jump is pretty cool, but I hate the circle. I just hate. The whole 360 degree like spiral loop downwards, it's so dumb. Not something I would really want to do on a race, but hey. As lo at least there's no endurances. Welcome back. The fuck is your phone doing? It's spamming. You had to leave for a moment? No worries, dude. I'm actually streaming longer than I should be. But hey, that's cool. The loop is fun. Not in these kind of cars. I don't know. I just don't. I don't enjoy it. And by the way, Vargas up to second now. The BMW who's been finishing second in every race is having a pretty bad run right now. You love the loop. Everyone likes the loop but me. Bring Broadbean. Yeah, Broadbean is BB Raceway's okay. No, Northern Isle is not the worst track in GT in GT history. Northern Isle's fun because it's a short track like Bristol. Nice pass for the lead on the Bentley and it should be smooth sailing from here on out. We'll see. <laughs> it triggered. 
Yeah, BB Raceway. I mean, BB Raceway is supposed to be like Trenton in New Jersey or like Brooklyn's in the UK. Like, kind of like that oval with that oval with that um, right hander. Red Rock, zero beat. Get out of here. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, really? Red Rock is one that you don't like? Dude, I love Red Rock Speedway. So yeah, if I had to choose what I think the worst... <laughs> okay, bye. Bye-bye, have a good time. Um, if I had to choose the three worst tracks, in my opinion, for GT in general, it would be the full version of Cape Ring, St. Croix Layout C, and... Oh, there's another one I'm trying to think right now. No, it might just be those two. It might just be those two tracks. Aizir Norwand? I mean, Aizir is okay. I feel like it'd be better if they utilize it with better cars, like, in the actual GT mode, like, oh yeah, Matterhorn, there we go, well, Matterhorn was alright. <laughs> Three words try side cry A, B, and C. Um, you see, I feel like Matterhorn was okay in GT6 because they used rally cars on there. Azure Norwand would be fun if they had used rally cars on that track, but they never used them. Honestly, the rally tracks in GT5... Okay. Uh, Shamani, or Shamanix, Shamani, however you pronounce that. The GT5 version. I don't like that track at all. I like the um, Gran Turismo 4 layout even more. You have to leave again. Ah, uh, alright. Oh, really? Zero Beat? What turn is that? But yeah, Shimani, Code the Azure is the worst. The one after the second straightaway? Oh, okay. Yeah, it is kind of a tricky corner. But really, Red Rock Valley is just a, a really good high-speed road course. I feel like if, like... I'd feel like if it was made in real life, I think the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series would put on a really good show there. Like, screw the Charlotte Roval, they should just make Red Rock Valley Speedway into a real thing. That would be awesome. The Fister Storm, still denied. Hey, what's up, Marvin? Bring back Test Course. SSRX, please, yes. <laughs> this course was shit, mate. <laughs> yeah, like, why doesn't it have a test course? Even though we have Tokyo Expressway, I still would want the special stage Route 5 back. And 11, even. I actually like 11. Using a student's Wi Fi. Ooh, I'm telling. Don't worry, we're not streaming for that long. I think we're going to just finish the GT All-Stars race and then end the stream. Yeah, what about it, Rishi? That is true, St. Croix is even longer. Thanks, Marvin, appreciate it. Not that it matters because we end up just deleting these archive streams anyways. Because Let's Play format, that's why. Let's snitch on Marvin. Oh, hell yeah. 
Let's call his student right now and just tell them that, we're, that he's using his Wi-Fi. Let's call his job, just, I don't know, <laughs> start dialing random numbers in the phone book. Like, hey, that one guy, Marvin the Gamer, he's, he's cheating. Now you hope you're here for good. But then you have to go again! Yeah, they like pretty much... St. Croix is not even a good track to drive on. Like, I mean, okay, not to drive. It's not a good racetrack. St. Croix A and B are probably decent. Okay, St. Croix A, I kind of have a biased opinion for it because of that one FIA race I did. Where I started 18th to finish 3rd. Which I absolutely loved. Layout A. I feel like Layout C, it's only good for cruising. That's it. It's only good for just doing like a track day or something, you know? Just for fun. Fun driving. Oh, look, we got a Jaguar 1 2. Yes, yeah, 0B, I remember. That was part of my Gran Turismo 1 Let's Play. I think I had Marvin the Gamer, Mikhail 24RD, and Steven HD as guests for that one race. We were talking about the Daytona 4th of July race where Ricky Stenhouse Jr. wrecked everyone and didn't even end up winning anyways. <laughs> Feels like a user-created track from GT6. It could be Lucino. Could be. But I'm not the one who likes to do speculations, like... I know there's some people out there who are predicting we're having a Spec 2.0 GT Sport update in October because of the 10 year, or not 10 year, 1 year anniversary of the game. And I'm just like, what makes you say that? Sure, we had that in GT5, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything. Oh, that was the first time we saw my videos! Oh! Awesome! Well, I appreciate you sticking around, dude. Really do. By the way, we're on the final lap. And Vargas has pretty much just dominated since he took the, lad, uh, the lead on lap three. No comment, CK. No comment. Hong Kong would be cool. Hong Kong would be cool. I actually really like Hong Kong. I know there's a lot of people who hate it. But I actually really like it because I'm a big fan of street course racing. Like, honestly, I don't care. Sorry, gotta go. Alright, no problem, dude. Thanks for stopping by anyways. Appreciate it. Have a good one. And see you later. Yeah, we didn't have that in GT6, so anything's possible. With that said, waste of time to speculate. True, very true. Um, the only track, the only real life track that I really, really, really want in GT Sport is Long Beach. With that, and Laguna Seca. With that being said, I don't care about what tracks we get. I'm pretty happy with whatever selection we get, but really the only wish list items I have is Laguna Seca and Long Beach. And the reason why I don't have a wish list is because. I think it's pointless to have one, really. Like a like a wish list saying that, oh, I want a McLaren Senna. Oh, I want Nurburgring from the 1960s. Oh, I want this track, I want that track. Because every time an update comes out, you're just going to get disappointed and just complain. You know, that's literally just going to be it. 
every time you get a new update, you're just gonna whine and complain about it. So that's why I don't really have a wish list, and that's why I don't set my standards way too high for new updates and new content. Alright, we win the championship. With that being said, we have only one round to go, Tokyo Route 246. It doesn't really matter what happens here, but we're still going to try to win the race regardless. So we need to increase our top speed because Tokyo is going to be a much faster track, so I'd say about 217 should be good. And then in terms of downforce, I think factory setting downforce should be good. Already don't expect much for the one year anniversary for this game, me neither. And I want to expect a lot, to be honest. And who doesn't? You know, who doesn't want to... Who doesn't want a bunch of free stuff? And who doesn't want a lot of stuff, you know? For the one year anniversary. But, you have to be realistic about it. Like you said, Smoky Mountain, GT3, make it happen, Polyphony. Dude, Smoky Mountain is my favorite. That's my favorite rally track in the entire series. I would love for Smoky Mountain to make a return. But see, the problem is that Rally content is not even used in GT Sport that much. And yes, I know that there's the mission challenges and I think the uh, driving school and then there's like one GT League event. But the GT League event, there's only like one or two tracks that are on dirt. The rest of, like the other one is a street course. It's Tokyo Expressway. So really, in terms of new rally content, I'd rather just see rally content come out for the next Gran Turismo game. Hey Barney, welcome back. How was your McDonald's? See, while you went to McDonald's, we had a whole entire war in this chat about fast food. So if anybody wants to blame our debate about fast food, blame Barney for breaking up McDonald's. I'm kidding. I'm just kidding, man. <laughs> but no, we really did have a war in here. Talking about whether or not Pizza Hut was better than Domino's, or whether or not McDonald's is better than Burger King, etc, etc. Yeah, Dragon Trail Seaside's good. Oh, you're full? Yeah, speaking of which, I haven't even had breakfast yet. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I literally just got up and then started doing that historic car cup race at Monaco because I'm like, dude, I just want to win this race and get this out of the way. Yeah, Tokyo would be awesome. That, that would be definitely a welcome addition to the game itself. Macau, no passing zones at all. Hey, what's up, Krona? No passing zones at all. Oh yeah, that'd be good. That'd be awesome, you know. And then people can just ram each other for the, you know, for the win. Pass for the lead. Executed. Yes, Twin Ring Motegi for sure. I mean, it's a two-for-one deal. You get the road course, and then you get an actual oval in there. Well, the problem with that, Barney, is that the AI is so unpredictable around Monaco that literally it's all luck-based. We just got lucky with what happened to us. The Chaparral 2J hit the wall, and we took the lead, and well, we won. 
afterwards by like 15 seconds. So no matter what you do to the car, you're just gonna have to just get lucky, that's it. So my Toyota 7, I have to shorten the gears so that way it can just have monstrous acceleration up the hill and then increase the downforce a ton so that way my AI driver can just stuff it into the corners and try to get positions. But because the brain dead AI decides to try to hit apexes from the inside, from the outside, from like the non-racing line, they get stuck in the wall, you know? So that's the problem. Fortunately, we've won the race already, and now we don't have to deal with it again. I can imagine the look on Sky Hurricane's face when when he typed out like like the, the granny was using the Toyota 7? It's like, yes, the Toyota 7 was being used and yet still couldn't win after like multiple hours of trying. Hey GD, uh, no it's not. Gran Turismo 5's online doesn't exist anymore, not since 2014. We got a fight, maybe? A fight for 11th? Maybe the Fister Storm can redeem itself? The best track in Gran Turismo with Cape Ring Full. Changed my mind. Hell no, it ain't. Uh, Gran Turismo All-Stars. This is round number 5 out of 5, and it's Tokyo Route 246, so we've already won the championship. We're just trying to wrap up with the final race win. Well, take it would be an awesome addition, get two tracks in one, yep. Yeah, definitely, CK. This one, Barney. And yes, I know that this car wasn't really that successful in real life, I think, in terms of Le Mans, but Gran Turismo kind of made this car an icon. I just really like this thing. This thing is really nice looking. The Minolta Toyota. That's the one car I want to see in GT Sport. Yes it is, CK. That car is sexy indeed. Suzuka West Course? I mean, Suzuka West Course is okay. The Peugeot 905? Yeah. That is another car that we'll definitely want. Any way we can help out the Fister Storm, maybe? Well, for some reason, Vargas wanted to follow the Blitz for a little bit. Whoa, oh, the Minolta and GT Sport. I like the sound of the Cyber Mercedes. Are you talking about the sound in GT Sport? Because I don't remember what it sounds like. Oh. 
So we got two more laps to go. Once we cross the line. And with the championship already in the books, doesn't matter what happens to us, but I think we already have the race win. Dude, the Blitz is holding everyone up, look. It was for a minute. Will I do a GT6 stream? Uh, eventually. Gotta play the other games first, dude. Oh, no way, they fixed the sounds? Sweet. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I have no idea that they did that, CK and Arthur. Thanks for letting me know. Here's a fun fact for a lot of you guys. Only Abstract Sky knows this, but and Marvin the Gamer. But uh, I actually did the GT6 Let's Play when I first started my YouTube channel. Needless to say, it was terrible. It was god awful. And so it's been canceled and scrapped and stuff. And of course, I'm going to redo the LP eventually. But yeah, it was so bad that I don't even want to look at it. <laughs> that was almost about a year ago. Correct. GTPSP as well, but GTPSP is more of a side project, so that one doesn't really have a priority for me. It's more just like, I'll just do it occasionally from here and there, because really GTPSP, apart from the driving missions, it, there's nothing else to it. Wish you were around back then? Ah, oh, dude, better late than never, man. You know, the thing is, we all have to start somewhere. At that point in time, I was just kind of like... Finding my own kind of like style, I guess you could say. Which my style, just I figured out, you just gotta be yourself. Just be yourself, you know, don't really put on a persona or character or whatever. Don't be crazy wacky kooky. Oh my god, the BMW hit the wall! Dude, dude, dude! Like, no. Not saying that that's, that's how I was, but... Because I wasn't, but, um... Yeah, I mean, at the time, it's just like, you gotta start somewhere, you gotta find your own style. That's really it. Oh, GD, that would be awesome, dude. You know, I have a feeling it's gonna happen one day. I have a feeling it's gonna happen one day. Like, just wait for... Just wait for the wonderful hackers who do PS3 exploits and rebug and all this other stuff. They're going to find a way to do that kind of things. And when it happens, you know your boy's going to be doing open lobbies. And there we go. Clean sweep of every single race in the GT All-Stars Championship. Ryan Vargas wins all of them. Wins the title by 190 points over Martinez in the Speed 8. And, uh, yeah, the GT champion is low in the XG220, who edges out Martinez, the other Martinez, by 10 points. Thank you, sir. Or ma'am. 189,000 additional credits for championship win. Woo! All right. Alright game, so what do you have in store for us? What is our wonderful prize going to be? Oh that's right, there's two prize cars. You'll see right now, collapse once. Ooh, Nismo 380 RS Super Legetta, sweet. And level 17 class coupon because of the completion of the Expert Series of B-Spec. Alright, so we're going to open up the obvious one first, which is the Amuse Nismo 380 RS Superlega. Superlegera. Yeah, too, because of the fact that we completed the Expert Series all together. Yeah. 
Nope, we're doing all B spec first. That's an awesome car right there. That is a really awesome car. And the reason why we're not doing A-Spec first is because when I eventually do A-Spec, my A-Spec Let's Play, I don't want to do any um, kind of like unnecessary level grinding to get the licenses out the way and then the special events out the way. The cool thing about B-Spec is that even if you meet the, the minimum level required for the special events and the licenses, you only need a B-Spec or an A-Spec level to do so. So we're going to build up the suspense here. Before we open up our level 17 coupon, let's take a look at our Amuse. Here it is. That's an awesome looking car. Alright guys, moment of truth. Please give us something good, game. For the love of God, please give us a good car. It's a standard car. It's a... It's a... BOY! Are you serious? Wow! Finally we get something good! 20 million dollar car, are you serious? Oh man, I'm so happy. <laughs> Although, here's the thing. I think you can actually win this in B-Spec. Which, it doesn't matter because that just gives us an excuse to use the car in A-Spec and in B-Spec. But it's the fact that we finally get something that's not cr complete crap that I'm happy about. Well, so that's the end of the... Expert events. I would say next time we begin on the extreme events, but we've already started. And we've already started the endurances, so... Therefore, what I could say will not count. <laughs> That's it.